And how many times in life have we wanted to do something because our gut told us, I want to do that. I, I want to take a chance. I want to take a risk. I, I, want to, I want to shake up my life. I want something more. If you build it, they will come. You can ask a lot of people what that means to them and you'll get a lot of different answers. But I think everybody inside possesses their own special field of dreams. Is a swing and a mess? It can be. And you learn a lot from the misses. taught you any lessons? Stick with something. You learn a lot just by sticking with the team. Everybody. I am so happy to see you today. Thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. And I'm so glad that you're here, especially today, because I'm doing a special video today. This is third in the series of six, a look back at, at the movies. And today we're going to be talking about hopes and, and dreams and, and missed opportunities in our lives. We're going to be talking about Field of Dreams. funny I remember the first time I watched Field of Dreams it was 1989 and I don't remember ever crying that hard I cried so hard at the end of that movie that I thought I was gonna fall off my chair and I think I cried right into the next day so to me Field of Dreams is it's not a movie that you're gonna watch with your head you're not gonna see you know direction by Martin Scorsese you're not gonna hear you know clever written dialogue by Tennessee Williams no no that that's not what Field of Dreams is is all about Field of Dreams is a movie you suspend reality and you watch it with your heart you feel those frames of that movie and it touches you so deeply that you can't help but be transformed after you watch the film. And to me, Field of Dreams is about, it's about love, it's about hope, it's about passion, and it's about the choices we make in life. But most of all, it's about missed opportunities. And I think we all have experienced looking back and, and wondered, what if? What if I had made it? What if I had been discovered? What if I had just done this instead of that? Unfinished business. 
to me, that's what Field of Dreams is all about. You know, so many of you who have followed me over the years are well aware that I was raised by a grandfather that I loved, and he and I shared a love of photography and baseball. And I often go back and film baseball fields that I went to with my grandfather. So before I even started watching Field of Dreams, I knew who Shoeless Joe Jackson was. I, I knew that my grandfather didn't believe that Shoeless Joe threw the World Series. And I had faith in that my grandfather thought he was innocent. So when Shoeless Joe shows up in Kevin Costner's uh, or Ray Consuela's uh, cornfield, I thought, okay, this is fantastic made me feel well made me feel wonderful and it drew me right into the movie so the first time around when I watched that movie I knew that Ray had unfinished business with his father because his father loved Shoeless Joe Jackson and I knew Terrence Mann who was really J.D. Salinger, but let's just say Terrence Mann in the movie. You know, he was a, an author and a voice of, of reason and, and intelligence in the 60s, and he just quit. He lost his passion. And, and then there was, there was Moonlight Graham, the doctor who always dreamed of playing in the major leagues and made it almost. He got to play one inning before I was kicked to the curb. So there, there's three instances in this movie of missed opportunities. And the first time around, at the end of the film, when Ray asked his father if he'd like to have a catch, I cried and I cried because I felt in my heart I had unfinished business with my grandfather. And I just couldn't stop crying because I kept thinking to just have one day back with this wonderful man who raised me. That's what that movie was about to me. I saw it with my heart and I was overcome with emotion. Well, 30 years later, it was different. 30 years later, I have made my peace with the memory of my grandfather that I, you allow me to, to bring the world that I had with my grandfather to life. You, you allow me to, to film the places that we went to and to, to tell you about how he encouraged me to be the woman I am today. So this time around watching this film, I noticed two unique things that I never saw before. And number one was when Ray wants to plow uh, his corn over to make a baseball field because he's hearing voices. If you build it, he will come. Go the distance. Ease his pain. Well, that's crazy. He's going to lose the farm. So what does his wife say? His wife says, if you want to do that, then you should do it. She loved him and, and she believed in him. And how many times in life have we wanted to do something because our gut told us, I want to do that. I, I want to take a chance. I want to take a risk. I, I want to I wanna shake up my life. I want something more. Only to have the people around us say, oh, don't do that. That's too risky. You could lose everything. You can't do that. Most of the time, that's what we hear from the people who love us because they want, they want what's best for us and they want us to play it safe. But Ray's wife in Field of Dreams just loves him and she loves him enough to let him do something completely crazy. She suspends reality and she supports him. And I don't ever remember thinking to myself 30 years ago, oh, that's important. <laughs> but this time I did. The second thing 
I noticed in watching Field of Dreams over again was Moonlight Graham, Dot Graham. And I thought about regrets and, and people's happiness. And I truly don't think a person can really be happy if their life is full of regrets and, and feeling that their life didn't turn out the way they wanted it to and, and haunted by circumstances that, well, maybe if things had just been a little, little different, their life would have been so much better. So in the movie, when Ray says to Doc, you know, what happened to you? You know, you made it to the majors, but you only got to play in one, e one inning. A lot of people would consider that, that a tragedy. And Doc Graham just looks at him and says, if I had only gotten to be a doctor for one day, now that, now that would have been a tragedy. And I really took that to heart. Because, you know, when I was a young girl, more than anything, I wanted to be a musician. I wanted to be like Joni Mitchell. I wanted to, to write my songs and have people buy my albums. And I wanted to travel the world. And I wanted to be somebody with my music. I loved my music so much. But in looking back on that, you know, I'm kind of a sensitive soul. Would I have survived it? I mean, who knows, but sometimes musicians or artists in general, they have tough lives. I mean, I used to feel so sad and so depressed. I would look back on my catalog, all my songs, and, and wonder, was I good enough? Why didn't I make it? And just recently, I have such peace with that. So watching this movie again, when Doc says, you know, the tragedy would have been if he'd only been a doctor for a day. I feel like me making, me not making it in, in the music world, that's not a tragedy. <laughs> that's nothing for me to feel sad or bitter about. The tragedy would have been if I didn't get to be a, a mom or, or a grandmother or live this long and have the joy that I have and the passion I have to still write music and create little films and videos. That would have been a tragedy. If you build it, he will come. If you build it, they will come. What What does that mean to you? You know, I asked four or five people this week what that meant to them and they all gave me a different answer. What is it about that movie? What are the lessons that Field of Dreams teaches us? That 30 years later, people get in their cars and drive cross country to go to Iowa Get on that baseball field and play catch with their daughters and sons. What is it? What's driving those people to go there? I mean, you know, you have to suspend reality to, to truly love that movie. But what is it? What are the lessons that that movie teaches us? What does it mean if you build it, they will come? So I'm watching the movie again, and I'm asking myself, I'm asking myself this question. So Ray is watching, it's the end of the film, and Ray is watching Shoeless Joe walk away, and he's full of gratitude, because things have gotten resolved. And he yells out to Shoeless Joe, thank you, thank you for what you've done. And Shoeless Joe turns around and says, no. No, Ray. It was you. It was all you. 
and that hit me like a ton of bricks. And I had it. That your life, your your dreams, how, how you look at maybe some of those missed opportunities and how you can fix them and make them right. Not only for you, but for those around you, it's all, it's all up to us. I never, I never understood that lesson of that film until now. My happiness, my well-being, my making peace with my past, that doesn't have to do with anybody but me. You know, over the years, I've had a lot of people ask me, you know, well, how did you start a, a YouTube channel? Or, I want to start a YouTube channel. What do you, what do you think? Or, you know, I'm struggling with my channel. What would, what's your advice? Or I'm struggling with my life. And I've always thought about that phrase from the movie. If you build it, they will come. If you build something with your own two hands and it's, it's true to who you are and you build it with care and you build it brick by brick and it's from your heart and it's something different because it's so real. People will come. For it, it's money they have and peace they lack. Everybody, thank you so much for being here today and you know what last night when I was watching Field of Dreams with Desi he kept saying where are all the dogs how come nobody in this movie has any dogs <laughs> they should make like Field of Dogs I don't know I'd watch it if you build it they will come you can ask a lot of people what that means to them and you'll get a lot of different answers But I think everybody inside possesses their own special field of dreams.